and welcome to the week 12 recap. I'd like to begin by making excuses for why I haven't made videos the past two weeks. Well, I actually made one for week 10, but after I uploaded it, I found out that Alanis Morissette's song has special copyrights and they banned my video from YouTube. And then week 11, I was spending time with this lovely person and didn't get around to making a video. It's a crane on your wedding day. It's a free ride when you've already paid. Before we move on, some belated congratulations are in order. Congratulations to Mocha Delight for winning Owner of the Week. In week 10, Uncle Noli defeated Chris and Bonnie 163 to 131. And congratulations to Team Half Chub. Sorry that your name couldn't be upgraded to Full Chub, but you did make an amazing Monday night comeback thanks to Jared Goff against the Fast and the Flurious, beating them 134 to 127. And I guess this also means congratulations are in order to the Fast and the Flurious for losing to Owners of the Week back to back in week 10 and week 11. Keep it up, ladies. Checking out the scores from week 12, I beat Chris and Bonnie by a healthy 22 points, giving them their third loss in a row. Woodat Woodat Nation couldn't pull off the W against the grind and is now out of the running for the playoffs. Team Half Chub failed to breach the 100 point mark and lost to Team Merrimy, allowing Team Merrimy to move up to 8th place. In a close battle of two other really low scoring teams, Mocha D Light wins by one point against the first place team, do it for the kids and bless. Team Vandrew finally gets a win against the Wampton Super Scrubs, and Town Business scores a whopping 176 points, knocking the State Steelies down to 9th place. And even though they're out of the playoff round, Team Run DNC beats Team Davenport 125 to 104, which knocks Team Davenport to a lower place than me, so thanks, Mom and Dad. Congratulations to Mike for winning this year's Most Improved Owner. He struggled getting wins last year, but has not struggled at all this year as we move in to week 13 with him in first place. I'd also like to say goodbye to the teams that won't be joining us this year in the postseason. Better luck next year. And best of luck to the five teams fighting for the remaining two playoff spots. David, thanks for crunching all the numbers and giving us all the playoff clinching scenarios. A lot of the information's way over my head, but best of luck to everybody involved, and I can't wait to see how Week 13 turns out. Should be a good one.